Hey there, folks. I'm here at my home. Got back from LA uh, about an hour or two ago. Got back from, um, you know, got off the plane and uh, had a safe, safe travels. It was all great. And we had a great time in Southern California, as you guys know. Um, you guys have, uh, you know, you may have seen my videos. Uh, had saw a ton of palms there and uh, definitely go check those out um, if you haven't yet. But I um, just want to show you something that I collected while I was there and I'll be trying to germinate. And um, that is this uh, Washingtonia filiferous seed. And before I talk about that, I want to talk about why, uh, you know, why I guess it's significant or um, what it means, you know, to have pure filiferous seed. And that's because uh, most California fan palms that you'll find in the market, either at, you know, a, a, a garden center, even like a, a specialty palm or, or, or just a, a specialty garden center, um, often it'll be some degree of hybridization. You know, I mean, for example, with the Mexican fan palm, often in LA streets, you'll see a lot of Mexican fan palms. People would think they're Mexican fan palms at first, but their trunks are a little bit thicker. And this is what's called Washingtonia filibusta. And it's a combination of robusta and filifera. It's a hybrid between the two species because they grow side by side in, in cultivation. And obviously they, you know, cross pollinate and stuff like that. And um, they uh, form hybrids. And, um, you know, often, you know, what will be sold as filifera might just be a uh, filifera cross robusta, a, a filibusta that's just been rebred with filifera numerous times. So it's just, the trunk just gets thicker and thicker, but it's still a hybrid. And often you can tell as it grows up, it doesn't quite have that thick filifera trunk. So most in the market are actually hybrids. So the real way to assure that is either to go to a very specialty pollen nursery um, that, you know, can assure where they got the seed from that it's pure filifera or to just go and collect the seed yourself. And that's what I've done. And uh, you guys may have seen my video yesterday of the amazing Thousand Palms Oasis in the Coachella Valley Preserve near Palm Springs, California. And um, there, uh, there are, you know, there's a giant several groves of wild Washingtonia filifera and it's pure because it's wild and the Mexican fan palm doesn't grow there and even though there's cultivated specimens near there there's none that are like within a couple of miles of there um because out in the middle of you know a wilderness so um that is as pure as pure filifera get uh so that's absolutely pure and there were, there were seeds everywhere a lot of the palms there had seeds and a lot of them are actually just germinating right in the middle of the pond and the wetlands there. So, you know, it's 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 a kind of myth because there are relic species. So they do like water and uh, they don't, you know, I mean, in a, in a cold climate, they don't like wet feet. But if, uh, you know, they can germinate right in standing water, as I saw yesterday. And I was actually kind of surprised to see that. It was really cool to see all those seedlings literally standing in the middle of a water, like a like stable miner or something. Um, yeah, that was super neat. And uh, so, yeah, they, they don't mind a bit of water. Um, they are... Not, I wouldn't call them tropical species, but they're relic species from a time when the climate in Southern California was tropical. That's how they became uh, to grow in only these oases as they were once all over the landscape when it was like a lush tropical climate. And then over time, things dried out. Same with this, this you know, sequoias, how they only became restricted to moist canyon bottoms where they could survive because it got too dry everywhere else. Same with these, it, it became too too dry everywhere else. And they only grew around water sources where they uh, actually had enough to survive. So here is the uh, baggie of... Uh, potting soil and uh, you guys can see uh, I just got this and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, put some water in there and uh, then I'm going to put the uh, seeds in so yeah here we go and uh, you know this is uh, probably about how much you want to fill it up I, I have I don't know rough estimation maybe around 50 seeds there um, maybe a little more actually um, it may look like less but it's actually once you count it out it comes out to be a good amount um, just grabbed them right off a tree somewhere on the ground um, and I, as I grab the seeds off you know, um, I helped distribute some of the seeds because they fall as you grab them off. So it helps to sort of, you know, reproduce them as well. Um, but yeah, I, I'm here. I'll open this up like that and show you guys exactly how much water you want to pour in uh, here. So, you know, before I germinated palmetto seeds, I probably have a bit more seeds here, but it's, you know, just about the same. So you could see that. That's probably good. That is probably good. Maybe a tad bit more. There, that's, yeah, that's probably a good amount of water. So there we go. Uh, I, uh, you know, it's, it's an estimation. It's not a science. They can grow with more, a little more, a little less probably. But um, yeah, this is, uh, so you want to get a little water in there, obviously, because that's how you keep them, uh, you know, keep them growing. And then you just toss the seeds in there like that. And you zip it up and you shake them to get them all distributed. So then they're not all in the same area. And they have, you know, a good amount of soil for each of them. Um, so yeah, kind of... <laughs> Try to grab all these up but um yeah the, the the thing about the baggie how it works is once you seal it up you do want to leave a little bit of um 
of air because obviously that's how you create that humid environment that they need to germinate, you know, because you're not adding, you never need to add water to it, which is the super cool part, but you need some air to create the, you know, sort of moist environment so that you don't want to completely, seal, you don't want to like seal it up like you're sealing food in a plastic bag where you suck out all the air because you don't want that suction and, and lack of air. You actually want a little bit. So I'm going to try to close this up. Pardon me here for one second. So yeah, close it up. A little bit of air, and uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is how you do it, folks. All right, there we go. So got it all in there. And then shake, shake, shake. That's a, it's hard to shake with one hand. I'll see where you shake this after, but yeah, that's how you do it. Leave a little bit of air. You can see I have a, it's a little. You know, if, I, if I squeeze it, you, there's a little bit of that air. That's what you want. You don't want maybe all air, but uh, that's a good amount. Uh, and uh, yeah, they should germinate. Um, this palmetto took a while. Uh, these might take take a little while, a couple months probably, at least maybe three months, four months. But um, sure enough, you know, some of them definitely will germinate. And I'm really looking forward to that because this is uh, the purest of pure filifera. And it's actually very rare kind of anywhere to find pure uh, filifera seed. And I got this right from the source at a wild uh, Washingtonia filifera oasis, which was just so cool. So, all right, thanks for watching folks. Thank you for more videos, great method baggy method best method uh i know uh you know there's also the moist paper towel method and like heating lamps and all this fancy technology but i think the old-fashioned baggy method works just fine and uh it's always worked for me so yeah i uh i highly recommend all right thanks for watching folks stay tuned for more videos this is uh germinating california fan palm washington filiferous seed in the baggie using the baggy method all right take care folks